will then um, uh, pass it uh, over to. Um, no, actually, I'm sorry. The um, the our council. Uh, I'm I'm rarely this tongue tied, uh, but uh, we want to uh, recognize uh, uh, council uh, women Gaddis and Venice Williams who are here. Um, obviously, we want to hear from uh, uh, Juwan, uh, the individual that we have hired. Um, after Chief Crawl, it's Reggie Williams. I knew that there was, uh, I, I was wondering what on my notes the name Will meant, but I think that was uh, short uh, for Williams. So I was uh, temporarily uh, confused and I apologize. So it'll go from me to Chief Crawl to uh, Reggie. Um, uh, the, uh, you know, we want to hear from Joanne, of course, uh, and then we'll, uh, you know, if there's time, we'd love to hear from the members of council as well. Uh, and then we'll have uh, some question and answer. So uh, really what I want to emphasize is how uh, excited we are in the city of Toledo to start this work. Um, you might remember last fall, uh, we, uh, when I say we, I mean myself, but also Katie Crosby, our chief of staff, uh, announced an initiative uh, that would treat gun violence uh, as a public health crisis to treat it as the public health crisis that it is. Um, we had a notion of what we wanted to do and what that meant, uh, but we knew that um, it was going to take resources to fight this the way it needs to be fought. And we couldn't do that, of course, until city council uh, approved our budget. Uh, and um, once it did, and it did uh, approve the budget uh, about a month ago or so, uh, that un locked uh, the resources we need to move forward. So that was sort of the timing, the chronological timing of how we got uh, to where we are. Knowing that this was an opportunity uh, that we were likely to have uh, if council were to approve our budget, uh, we began posting for this position and received uh, a, lot of, uh, a lot of interest. Um, the process that uh, resulted um, in us uh, selecting Juwan to lead uh, our efforts uh, was a process that had a lot of input from a lot of different uh, people. You see on this uh, Zoom right now uh, some of the uh, some of the individuals, the community members uh, that formed not so much a literal screening committee, but certainly an ad hoc advisory committee of. Uh, important leaders in the community and opinion shapers, uh, all of whom uh, we wanted to feel good about the direction we were headed. Uh, so whether it's Pastor Gordon or Donnie Miller or Reggie Williams, if you will, that I noted earlier, um, or David Ross or actually half a dozen uh, other community leaders, uh, we wanted to make sure that the person we were selecting uh, for this role uh, had, uh, you know, the respect and trust of important community shapers. Um, we're going to hear from Chief Krell next, but we also wanted to make sure that Juwan was someone that uh, could uh, work with the police department. Uh, we, uh, Juwan had an opportunity uh, recently to sit down with uh, uh, the, the sort of rank and file uh, police officers, the patrolman's union, the command officer's union, and and I, I really do think that we have found someone who can lead our community through a brand new process that we have never really done anything quite like this. We've never, uh, we're creating this uh, program out of whole cloth. There's never been an initiative quite like this. We've created a brand new position and brought in an individual uh, to fill a position that didn't exist a few weeks ago. So we're, we're building this from the ground up. Um, but we know how important the work is. Obviously, um, you know, we are in a period uh, in our city and in our country where we've seen uh, more violence than any of us, uh, than any of us can bear. And while it is the case that um, we are part of a nas national unfortunate trend in this direction, uh, almost certainly with COVID as at least one of the factors that could be uh, causing the numbers that we see. Um, and again, I mean, the, I think 30 percent among the 100 largest cities in the country, I think there was a 30 percent increase uh, in homicides last year, 40 percent increase on, with homicides involving 
guns uh, just in the just in our Great Lakes region. You know, Milwaukee, I believe, had a 95% increase uh, in homicides. Louisville was 90% plus. Chicago, I mean, the numbers are heartbreaking all over our region, all over our country, and Toledo is not immune uh, from that. Um, but um, it's not our approach uh, to just shrug our shoulders and say, well, it's happening everywhere. There's nothing we can do about it. That's not our attitude. Um, we um, have said all along that we're going to try things. We're going to try new things. Some of them are going to work. Some of them aren't. Um, those that don't work, we'll learn from it, uh, dust ourselves off, and then try something else. This is one of those moments where we're trying something new. We're trying something different. And we, we're going to make sure that we're doing what we need to do in this city uh, to respond to this moment in history. And it doesn't matter what's happening in other cities. It doesn't matter if, if, if we're riding along on a, uh, on a wave that's affecting the whole country. We care about Toledo and we want to make sure that we are doing what we need to do. So we're excited um, about Juwan. Uh, I think the community is, the, uh, these groups that he's met with uh, couldn't be more enthusiastic. Um, some in the community may uh, already know him and uh, be aware of uh, you know, his, his name and background. Uh, if you are either a football fan uh, or a University of Toledo uh, fan, you may have uh, come across his name. Uh, he's someone whose uh, life experiences and resume uh, drew us to him. Um, the, um, you know, Joan, just like all of us, um, has had uh, life experiences that have been positive and life experiences that have been negative. And, has made life choices that were positive and life, life choices that were negative. And he's learned from both, just as we all do. And frankly, um, it was some of the life experiences that he has had uh, that didn't scare us away from Juwan, but uh, uh, drew us to him. Um, he has had authentic life experiences that I think um, will help him in this position and, and make him relatable and real uh, to the people he'll be working with. Um, so, um, you know, the fact that, um, you know, he's had both good and bad experiences uh, in his life uh, is a plus for us. And I looked at it as a plus. And seeing some of the things that, has, that he has encountered in his life uh, is part of what convinced me that we have the right person uh, to lead this effort. So um, we're excited. Apologize for kind of getting lost on my notes there for a moment. Um, but um, if anything, I am just so excited to have Joanne on board uh, that I became tongue tied. Uh, so we're ready to go. Um, we're ready uh, to move just logistically up here on the 22nd floor. And it's my understanding he's going to be sitting right over there. So I'm excited to have uh, uh, another, another person up here uh, on the floor, uh, you know, right at the executive, the highest levels of city government, um, focusing on this crucial, uh, this crucial program and this crucial problem. So, with that, I'd like to turn it over to our police chief, George Crawl, to make some comments. Thank you, Mayor. I'll be brief. There's a lot of people on this call who who would like to speak. Um, I, I echo what the mayor uh, just said. We've had a rough 2020, violence-wise. In fact, we've taken. We took 1,600 guns off of the streets last year. We've usually averaged between 1,000 and 1,100. So we saw our, our fair share of violence last year. Um, I appreciate that the city's being very proactive in looking at this as a public health issue rather than just a law enforcement issue. And I would be remiss as a police chief if I would not be involved enthusiastically with any type of uh, program that can help reduce violence in this city, even if it's not the traditional law enforcement one. So when when uh, Ms. Crosby asked who wanted to be on the interview panel for this, I enthusiastically said I do, because I think this is so important. And I look forward to, to working with Juwan and um, he has my commitment, uh, my department's commitment, and we will work together as partners to help uh, reduce gun violence and keep the city uh, right where it should be. Um, I will now pass this on to uh, Councilwoman uh, Williams, if, if you want to make some 
some comments. Thank you, Chief Crawl, and thank you, uh, Mayor Kasakavich. I appreciate your time. As we made history on homicides last year, let's make history and lessening that this year. In District 4, we suffered so many of those losses last year, and this year is beginning to look the same. As District 4 Councilwoman, I believe the community needs should come first. As the mayor stated, gun violence is a public health crisis. This new gun violence initiative is a necessity and needs to be community driven. As we embark on this task, I believe Jawan Armour is best suited for a program coordinator. For several reasons, one being he knows the work, he knows the community. Many people will try to bring up reasons why this position is either not needed or why he is not a good fit because of their own personal beliefs or opinions. But I stand firm when I say he is indeed the best candidate. He has knowledge of working in a team to get things done. He has strong roots in the central city and he knows what was needed when he needed to try navigate through life. I believe he is ready to be a strong advocate for our community. I stated this is needs to be community driven. Well, he is of our community. This new gun violence initiative has to have strong community base. And I'm hopeful that Mr. Armour can build that community base. It was an honor to be asked my opinion in the interview process. I was able to see firsthand his ability to navigate Ms. Donnie's questions and Dr. Perryman's tough questions. They were no nonsense questions. And he, he struggled through various technical issues on that day of the group interview, but he persevered. I hope the administration, my colleagues on council, and the Toledo community is ready to support Mr. Armour in his new role, as we need this team to rally to get this work started. I would like to thank the mayor and his administration for hearing our cry here in the city, and in, specifically in District 4, and making this leap into change. It is very non-traditional, but I appreciate their passion into getting this work done. And I thank you for allowing me to be in this process. Welcome aboard, Mr. Armour, and let's work. Absolutely. Councilwoman Gaddis. Um, I just wanted to take a minute and share that, that, you know, some of the most difficult conversations that I've had as an educator, a neighbor, and a, and a council member is around the violence in our neighborhood. Um, whether it's from conversations with our youth to our elders and everyone in between, when an act of violence happens in our neighborhoods and our communities, we're all impacted and collectively we suffer trauma. Um, I think up until this point, we've done the best we can to triage with the tools we have, but the Cure Violence Initiative under Juwan is a different set of tools in a different set of toolbox. And I'm very optimistic for the future of Toledo. So thank you for being part of this process. And I'm, I'm excited to work forward on this. Thank you. Juwan. Um, well, uh, first of all, I want to thank you guys for the opportunity um, and the kind words. I, I definitely look forward to the task ahead. Um, it's an absolute honor uh, to be a part of an initiative to reduce gun violence in uh, the city where I come from, uh, the community that my family lives, the community where my friends' family live, and, and uh, the communities that their children live in. So, um, and the view by taking account that this is a public health crisis, we can look at all the aspects of, of the community and the individuals that live in it. Um, to be able to make a more, to create a more comprehensive uh, approach to addressing the need uh, for some gun violence interventions. Okay, um, I know that uh, media members must have questions and we're gonna get to them very soon, but uh, before we do that, I, I do wanna give an opportunity to the community members who have joined us, uh, all of whom were part of this interview process. I, I listed them all earlier. I didn't uh, list uh, Dr. Tracy Perriman, but I will now. Um, she and the others are here, and though none of them are required uh, to make any comments, if any of them would like to sort of speak up and give uh, their perspective on the process, you know, the sort of the, the interviews, the conversations, uh, uh, the, or the program in general, um, in, you know, indicate a willingness to do so now, and, and we will call on you, and then we'll turn it over to 
the media. So um, I don't know if I see any hands up uh, uh, from any community members who want uh, uh, who want to speak, and that's okay. <laughs> They're all there. Whoops, is there one? David Ross. David Ross. Okay, so let's uh, let's hear from David. Thank you. Yeah, I just wanted to <clears throat> congratulate Joanne on his position and hope that community as a village work together to help him be successful because this is well needed, it's essential, and we can um, all work together to make him be successful because that's what it takes. It's, it, him can't, he can't do it alone. We got to all see that we um, want this violence to end in our community. I just want to say thank you to Jawan as well for you know taking this uh, monumental approach to uh, lead in our community. Uh, my sentiments are the same with David Ross. You know we will support in any way, shape, or form as possible uh, to help Jawan uh, reduce gun violence in our community. Um, we know that it's uh, a great task. Uh, it will take a lot of hard work but we want to support and dedicate whatever we need, resources, uh, skill sets, and talents to Jawan to help him uh, achieve the goals that he is set out to do. So thank you again. So if I could add to that, to certainly welcome Jawan, we are so thrilled to have you here. Um, but I'd also like to make note that none of this would be possible if it were not for the forward thinking and the innovative thinking of the mayor and Katie. Um, this is a first step in this community. We've not done anything like this before. And had it not been for their willingness to reach out and take a chance on a program like this, we wouldn't be here now. And one of the reasons that this is so important is that uh, aside from the obvious reasons that make it important, what I think we don't often think about is that we cannot truly gain any type of equity in our communities if we do not stop the violence in this community or reduce the, the violence in our communities. We can't move forward with those projects that we want to move forward with that change the lives of the people um, in these communities that we serve. So this is certainly about stopping the violence, but um, when you extrapolate the effects of the impact of this program that Juan, you are, so blessed to be able to lead. I, I think that this is an amazing opportunity for you and your skill set. When you take a look at the, the impact and the way it's going to bounce around every other thing that those of us on this phone are trying to do in our communities, we can't begin to um, give it enough attention and support and praise. So thanks, Katie. Thanks, Mayor. Thanks, Juan. I want to echo the sentiments of Donnie Miller and that uh, I believe that the mayor and Chief Craw, this is really forward thinking, but also gun violence affects every aspect of our city. And I think that either we're part of the problem or we're part of the solution. And in being part of the solution, I think we need to support the administration and Chief Kral and Jawan as they move forward with this initiative. I had an opportunity to talk to Jawan and I challenged him and I believe that he is the right person for this position. He is a person who has some life experience with the very problem that he'll be dealing with. And I think that um, working with him will bring about uh, a positive and improved uh, situation to our city. Our, situ our city is really challenged like every other city uh, in our country because of this uh, gun violence but I think we can do something about it. We can make a difference and let us pull together and work together and do our best to see transformation in our city. Because as I said, it affects us all. Either we're part of the solution or we're part of the problem. I'll just speak very briefly to what impressed me about uh, Joanne at the interview stage. And it was his passion. I think that passion is going to be a critical piece of advancing this work. And I also want to say that, as Pastor Gordon said, it is all of our, it's all of our responsibility to be a part of the solution. So in you leading this work and leading the advancement of this work, I would just implore you to not take responsibility and sole responsibility 
for the outcomes associated with this work and to continue to keep that passion, that drive and that love of authenticity and to continue to use your voice uh, to speak on behalf of the people who have to live in these neighborhoods and who have firsthand experience with the gun violence that's going on. And that I'm committed and I'm sure that many on this call are committed to making sure that you have the ear that you need, the voices that you need to advance the work and also the resources that you need because it's all of our responsibility and not just yours. But thank you for stepping forward and taking the responsibility for leading this work's advancement. Thank you again. All right. And thank all of you um, for your time that you invested in this. Um, uh, this process, uh, you know, I, I think it, it has helped build uh, a better program. And it, it was alluded to, but I, I do need to say uh, before we open up to questions that I want to give a, a, a special thanks uh, to Katie Crosby. This has been um, a labor of love for her. Um, this, uh, you know, her experiences, especially in, in Dayton, um, you know, th this is, uh, you know, th many of the ideas uh, that have gone into creating this initiative and to bringing on someone like Joanne, and then, of course, what comes next. Uh, we've talked about, uh, you know, hiring violence interrupters and everything that we've talked about. All of those concepts and ideas, which are new to Toledo, by and large, um, Katie really, in a very real way, has, has brought them to the table and uh, her passion in organizing this and frankly pushing pushing this, pushing me, pushing council um, is a credit to her and is gonna make our community a better place. So uh, so with that, we'd like to open, um, I'd like to open it up to questions for any, any one of us uh, from members of the media uh, uh, who may have them. Okay, the first question comes from Carla at WTOL. Carla? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, great. Um, so which initiatives or projects will you be tackling first, Joanne? Sorry, one more time. Which initiatives or projects will you be tackling first? I think first, um, my first 90 days will look like more of introducing myself to the community, to uh, the resources that we have available. Um, establishing assessment, a needs assessment of what the community, um, what's needed in the community to kind of create change. Um, so as, as we develop the process, as we hire violence interrupters, as we hire a resource person, um, we'll start identifying the priorities of uh, which issues we'll tackle, the most prevalent ones. Our next question comes from Sean Hegarty at Channel 13. John. Okay. Uh, good afternoon. Juwan, as once you get through the introductory period, what do you see your day in and day out looking like to try to reduce gun violence? I think the so our um looking at gun violence as a public health issue, we want to make sure that we are create, creating resources for the community. We are making sure that these resources are equitable and uh attainable. Uh so our our objective is to be more. Uh, proactive as the police are more uh, reactive to issues. So we want to kind of get ahead of issues before they even become an issue. It, it could be mental health, it could be um, uh, domestic violence. Regardless of what that issue is, that we have resources that are identifiable and attainable uh, by the community so that we can be more proactive in addressing the gun violence as, again, as opposed to being reactive to after incidents of violence happen. If I could follow that from Katie and the mayor, what sort of funding sources is he going to have to do those things? I, I can you answer, Katie, it? or you can. Sure. Katie, why don't you? So right now we have general fund dollars um, allocated um, to fund the program. Um, we are looking for other grant dollars. Uh, in addition to that, I saw a question in the in the chat about working with the Joyce Foundation. Um, yes, the Joyce Foundation would be on the list of. Um, organizations we will be reaching out to um, to identify additional grant opportunities. There's also um, grant funds that are available um, 
uh, through like criminal justice grants and things like that. So we would be working with Chief Craw to identify those opportunities. So partially funded by our general fund dollars and then partially funded by grants. And so just to follow up on that, Sean, there, the city council just passed the, the city budget a couple of weeks ago. There is money in that budget for Juwan and his uh, department. There's money in that budget to, to hire these violence coordinators we've talked about and other sort of perfunctory functions uh, that you might imagine. Um, so that there's, you know, he has resources uh, to run a little shop um, and he will if nothing else happens and that coordination with the mental health system, the coordination with the hospitals, uh, coordination with any one of a number of entities, he will be able to do if not a single additional penny falls from any foundation uh, or fundraising effort. But we do expect that there will, there will be uh, help from uh, foundations and other local funding partners. So he'll, he, he will have real work to do uh, just with what has already been budgeted in the city budget, and we can expand that and it can grow, uh, you know, with the help that we do expect to get from foundations. Your next question comes from Emma Henderson. Hi everyone. So um, anticipating this, uh, I actually was out in the community yesterday asking people what they think would be the most effective uh, way to end gun violence, you know, things that they would like to see. And the thing I heard over and over again is that they would love to see city leaders actually out in their neighborhoods, you know, meeting them where they are to talk about these types of things. So um, Juwan, um, everyone really, I would love to see, you know, is that something that you're willing to do? Um, I mean, specifically we were at Burnport Apartments where obviously there was a horrible tragedy less than two weeks ago where two children were shot and killed. Um, so what is it going to look like uh, as far as getting out there and talking to people? I know the pandemic can challenge things, but um, people are willing to talk. Absolutely. And I, I think that is uh, definitely a priority, um, meaning that one of the target areas is Junction. Uh, my family's from that area. My mother and father live in that area. My, my mom goes to church on, on, on that street, uh, Beulah Baptist. Um, so being in the community, being physical, um, is definitely a, a, a priority. And I, I definitely think it'll be received by the community. And as encouragement to them to know that, you know, efforts are being made uh, to hear their voices. And, and I guess, Emma, if I could just follow up on that, that there is, um, you know, all of us in public life, whether you're the mayor or you know, Councilwoman uh, Gaddis or Williams or other uh, public officials, we do um, understand the value of getting out in the neighborhoods, talking to people um, and meeting them where they are. There's, there's no question that's a core part of what, uh, of what we do. But there is also some value because the fact of the matter is we all get stretched, you know, so many different directions um, on so many different issues. Uh, we know how important it is to do that, but there is value in having someone like Juwan, who the only thing he has to do, his 100% of his job uh, is, is to work in this space and to build those relationships. And um, there's a role that you know I and members of council need to play uh, in the neighborhoods as well, but it, uh, there's no replacement for someone who wakes up every day with one job and in this case, um, you know, helping to, you know, helping to be a part of the system that we need uh, to address violence. Now, look, policing is, is and will always be a part of what we need to do. But as was mentioned by someone on this call, that by the time the police are called into a situation, something has already, something bad very likely has already happened. There's been a domestic dispute or a gunshot or whatever it is. Um, it, policing by its very nature is sort of a after a bad thing has happened sort of intervention. Um, what we are trying to do um, is look at the sort of the root causes of, of what's happening here, the, 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 maybe the social determinants of what's happening here. I am one who believes that um, someone is 
unlikely to resort to violence, particularly gun violence, unless he or she has already lost hope, lost hope in his or her situation, his or her neighborhood, his or her family structure, job, whatever it is. Um, when you lack hope, um, you are you you increasingly see violence as uh, maybe the only your, the only reaction to what you're facing. What we want to do is drill down into why certain people, certain neighborhoods um, have, have, uh, have lost a sense of hope. And that's what Joanne is gonna try to help us coordinate and to try to stop, uh, you know, to, to try to proactively figure out whether it's you know, access to healthcare or mental health services or job training or, it, or, or whatever it is all of the innumerable things that um, can go wrong in a life that prompt someone to resort to gun violence. We want to try to address that at the front end. And look, Juwan is one human being. Okay, he's one person. He's, we have to establish some expectations here. Um, he, he, he and any one of us are not going to be able to totally eradicate, of course, and that's absurd to think that anyone could. But we're going to try. We're going to try. We're trying something here. And it's not just Juwan. It's Juwan working in the neighborhoods with all of us. You know, this is no, no one person's responsibility. It's all of our responsibility. And that's what we're trying. That's what this is about. Okay, the next question is from Bree Malaska at NBC24. Hey, can you guys hear me? Yes. Awesome, thank you. Um, so, John, just you talked about the violence interrupters. How are you going to go about building that um, that staff, and how are you going to look to find those people? What are you looking for specifically, and how are they really going to play a role in stopping that violence before it happens? So, with violence interrupters, they have a number of responsibilities. One of those responsibilities is to uh, de-escalate uh, possible retaliation. Uh, so it'll be, it, it's, it's definitely ideal to have mem members from the community that are familiar with the areas that they'll be working with, that they are respected um, in this community, um, uh, and they are willing to be, you know, on the forefront of change. Uh, we don't want to encourage retaliation. We don't want to uh, promote uh, any negative attitude. So we want to make sure that these individuals come from the community and are aware of the goal that we have in mind. Another responsibility of the violence interrupters could be uh, to potentially be um, at the hospital to deliver information to families, to uh, resolve conflicts, to, again, as the mayor mentioned, is to get ahead of conflicts before they escalate into violence. And so um, those, are, those are the components that we're looking for. Um, but I think that one of, the, uh, one of the most important components is that they are respected. I feel that we're growing up in a generation where you know, our young people really don't respect much, uh, but a lot of times uh, the people that come from that community are, uh, they, they do hold weight, they do have an ear. Uh, I know one of the individuals that, you know, when I was going to Willie Knight is doing tremendous work now um, in, in working with felons and getting them reintroduced to, to the community. Um, and so having individuals like that who are respected by the youth, who are respected by the community um, intervene is is definitely uh, beneficial. And how are you going to go about trying to find those specific people? I think by being out in the community, um, being being present, uh, making it known that we are nobody wants violence. Nobody uh, is is looking to uh, be destructive. Uh, so I think that even the individuals from the community we're talking about addressing, they want to help and may not know how. And so. Uh, we'll be active in the community seeking out uh, these individuals. And I don't, I don't feel that we would have a, a problem identifying who these people are. And then maybe Katie or the mayor, if you guys could go into a little bit more about what, you know, if somebody sees this and they're interested, what's that financial incentive? You know, what part of the budget is being used for this? If you go into the numbers a little bit more. So we've um, allocated resources for uh, violence interrupters. Our goal is to have one violence interrupter for each of the three areas that we're focusing on. 
um, we will get more information. We actually, uh, Juwan is actually gonna be participating in technical assistance with Cure Violence next week uh, to get more information about the overall uh, strategy of Cure Violence and, and addressing gun violence as a public health crisis, but then also working with them to identify um, to identify, you know, the appropriate um, job description and skill sets for the violence interrupters, and this, these will be paid positions, and we'll be working with our community partners as well um, to support staffing those positions. So once we get to the point where we are engaged from cure violence, and Juwan has an opportunity to engage in the community, work with some of our partners. I know David. Uh, Ross has been working with the police department and community members, um, and, and he's expressed that there are folks that are interested in the community will identify, um, or Jawan will be responsible for identifying the appropriate folks for those roles. Great, thank you so much. Okay, the next question comes from Alex Mester at the Blade. Alex. Hi. Um, I'm curious, Joanne, a lot of people have mentioned, you know, your past experiences and some existing relationships that you have in the community as being one of the main reasons why they believe that you are the right guy for this position. Can you talk a little bit about some of those experiences and relationships? Um, absolutely. I think uh, the negative experiences that I've had have been engaging with uh, officers. And so to be accepted and taking a role where you're working hand in hand with a Toledo Police Department is huge and the ability to show that, uh, I know Chief Craw actually asked me to send in an interview because a person's past dictate their future, and absolutely not. And so by having me in a role where I will be working hand in hand with Toledo Police, it shows that um, that your past does not dictate your future, that uh, any positive intervention uh, cannot stop an individual from being progressive, being positive, and creating change. And so uh, outside of that, coming from the community which we'll be working with, um, also gives me credibility in, in the community and in the neighborhoods we'll be addressing. There, we have another question from Sean Haggerty at Channel 13. Sean? Hey, Juwan, is there, is there any one particular incident that you can think of that's in your background that really will set you up well to succeed here? Can you repeat that one more time? Is there anything in particular in your background? Is there one specific incident you were going to recall you think really sets yourself up well to go through with this job? Um, I think mainly my work with Humidop Lucas County and working with our felony reentry program, uh, seeing a difference that applying some positive interventions, having people think critically about the decisions they're making, produce positive outcomes. In that particular position, that role, we reduce the recidivism for our um, felony, our felons by five to five to seven percent, um, and it was mainly just having them uh, incorporate some positive thinking, incorporate some creative, um, positive creative ways to attack life, having had to re-enter society. So I think that is the biggest benefit, but also in implementing here where I'm at now at the Columbus Art Technology Academy, implementing social emotional learning tools, seeing the benefit of children who identify how critical, you know, decisions can be in, in future outcomes. And so, you know, I, I, it's, it's a lot of, it's a lot of experience I will pull on, but I think any behavior, my uh, experience that I've had to, even if my own interventions, um, creating a positive outlook on life and showing individuals how critical decisions can be, um, will be my biggest tool. There, we have another question from Emma Henderson. Oh, yes. Yeah. So I'm part of this is, um, you know, because we're declaring gun violence a public health crisis um, uh, for Chief of Staff Crosby, I know that I, you and I spoke previously about the fact that it's going to take a while to gather data and really figure out exactly, you know, the root causes of this issue. And it's going to cost money to get all of this type of stuff done. So where are we with that? And um, how can we get involved and have people get started while we're still waiting for all of those details to come in? Is Juwan just kind of the first step in this process? So um, I'll chime in and then I'll, I'll turn it back over to Juwan. I think, you know, when you talk about data and root causes, we have the data. So we know what neighborhoods um, have the highest instances of gun violence. 
And we know what some of those factors that are social determinants or the causes. We know how trauma um, creates a greater likelihood for someone to be involved in those life in, in that lifestyle. And we know how the physical environment of a community impacts uh, or um, creates a greater likelihood of a person to be involved in um, violent lifestyles. And so we, ha we have that information. I think it's more when we say it's gonna take time as we coordinate uh, with our partners and, and identify the interventions that we want to use specific to Toledo, because we have to do things that are specific to Toledo, um, Jawan will be working on that. But I think, you know, um, piggybacking off of the previous question, Jawan's both personal and professional experience, I think puts him uniquely in a position to, to um, hit the ground running. And so I'll turn it over back over to him to kind of talk about his approach um, as he enters into this space in the next few weeks. Thank you, Katie. I think the ability to work, work cross-functionally will be um, imperative working with, uh, to, because we are looking at it as a public health crisis, we have to take a holistic approach. And by that, we'll be working cross-functionally to provide emotional support, um, financial support, uh, psychological support, working with little public schools, working with churches, um, to address the holistic needs of the community and the individuals in it. Mary, next question comes from Carla Byron from WPOL. All right, hello again. Um, Joan, I, I'm sorry if this was already addressed. Um, when is your official first day and uh, what sort of challenges do you see uh, that you will have to overcome your main challenges in your role? Um, I think my official first date is the 23rd. Uh, uh, the biggest challenge I see is, is, is identifying the data and seeing what the numbers tell. Um, what Katie has said, we already have the information, we already have the data. So we just have to put together what the story and what this information is telling me. Uh, uh, it, the benefit is being able to work cross function with the Toledo Police Department. They have so many units that have already um, have acquired the data. So that's how uh, the mayor, Katie and the staff came up with the three target areas, the most incidents of violence and shootings in those areas. How can we improve um, on those target areas based on by what the numbers say? Thank you. All right, <clears throat> I, we don't see any um, uh, additional questions from the media. So I guess in terms of, um, I guess in terms, am I getting a signal that? Bree Malaska has one more question. Okay, Bree, Bree has Bree, one more follow up. What are the three okay. specific neighborhoods, Katie, you mentioned, I know the junction, what are the other two that this is going to um, start to focus on? Um, junction, uh, Garfield Star and LaGrange Corridor. And actually, that's a great segue. One of the reasons that we wanted to make sure that Councilwomen uh, Gaddis and Williams were with us at this news conference is that those they are the district members of council who represent the, those neighborhoods. So it made sense to have them join us today and to uh, have their support as we move forward. Look, um, I, I, I said this since the first day that I became mayor. I said it even before I became mayor. When we see a problem, we're going to try something. We're going to try things. We're, we're, our bias is always toward action. Uh, we're not. We're never going to be content just to feel sorry for ourselves and twiddle our thumbs and and hope the problem goes away on its own. Uh, we're going to try things. And and this, you know, we are, we are not happy with the status quo when it comes to violence in our community. Not happy with it. I don't think anyone's happy with it. Um, so instead of just wishing the problem away or hoping it goes away, we're gonna do something. And this program is one of our responses to, a, to a, a, something that is really challenging Toledo and cities all across the country. Um, I think it will work. I think it'll make a difference. Um, uh, and if we find you know, at some point down the road that it doesn't, Okay, we'll learn from that, we'll adapt, we'll tweak it, and then we'll try something else. There will always be naysayers. There will always be people who enjoy, you know, uh, throwing pot shots and being negative about everything. I get it. Um, but um, we don't have time 
for that. We don't have time for that uh, negativity and, and counterproductive uh, energy. We have a problem to solve and we're trying to solve it. That's what we're doing here. It's because we're not happy with the status quo. So, um, you know, we, uh, I just don't know what else to say <laughs> about that. So uh, this is something new. Uh, this was something that, um, you know, we had overwhelming support on city council to create, but I don't, I don't think it was unanimous. I think there, there, there might've been a few voices on city council that, uh, that didn't support this. And that's okay. I know there were concerns about uh, cost. You know, my attitude is, uh, you know, when, when the question is asked, you know, can we afford this? My question is, we can't afford not to do this. We can't afford not to try. We can't afford to, uh, to, 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 to allow a status quo that's not working uh, for all of our neighborhoods. So, um, so we're excited. We're excited to move forward. Uh, you know, this, this is a response to a problem uh, that we think makes sense, that enjoys the support of the community, the overwhelming majority of city council, Frankly, we can't afford not to do this. Um, and with that, uh, we're, we're excited to begin. We, have a, we know we have a lot of work ahead of us, uh, but bringing Juwan on board is, is the first step in a long process to try to make our community a little bit better. So with that, thank you. And I know we'll be talking about this as we move forward.